Today we're going to be changing the thermostat and the water pump on an E53 X5 BMW with the 3 liter M54 6 cylinder engine. The first thing we're going to do is remove this cover to allow us access to the belt and the water pump behind this. First we'll remove these two clips. Next we're going to remove our upper radiator hose by releasing the clip in the front and pulling it towards the driver side of the car. This will give us more room so we can fit our fan clutch tools on to remove the nut down here to remove the fan clutch. Now we'll take our fan clutch tool and use this to hold the bolts on the pulley of the water pump. This may take some finagling to get these bolt holes to line up. Then we'll take our 32 millimeter fan clutch wrench and place it onto the large fan clutch nut below. Just as a reminder, we're going to be turning this clockwise to loosen and counterclockwise to tighten. It's the opposite of a traditional threading system. As you can see with this tool right here I'm holding the water pump nuts and this is our 32 millimeter wrench in this hand and I'm going to be turning this wrench clockwise towards the driver's side of the car. Now that we've loosened that up we can just spin it until it comes to the end of the threads and it falls off. Here's a view looking towards the back of the car. And at this point now that our fan and clutch is removed we can slide this entire unit here, the fan shroud, up and out with the fan clutch and the fan. As you can see we now have tons of room here and I can fit my entire hand in between the motor and the radiator. Now our next step is to loosen up these four bolts on the water pump pulley. These are 10 millimeter bolts and we want to do that because the tension on the serpentine belt is going to stop this pulley from spinning while we loosen them. If we remove the serpentine belt first it's going to be very difficult if not impossible to loosen up these four bolts. Our next step is to remove the serpentine belt and to do that we're going to find our tensioner here. Sometimes there's a plastic dust cap over top of that and we can use a flathead screwdriver to pop that off. We're going to need an 8 millimeter allen socket and a long 3 8 inch drive extension to loosen tension on the tensioner and remove the belt. We're going to turn this clockwise towards the driver's side of the car. And we can slip the belt off the water pump pulley. Now it's very important to remember that when you put your fingers in between the belt to keep strong tension on our tensioner here or else your fingers could get pinched in between the belt and the pulley. Now we can remove the water pump pulley. Sometimes our water pump pulley will be stuck on to the water pump. So we'll just take some WD-40 here. Let that sit for a few minutes and then we can try to pry the pulley off without damaging it. As you can see the bearings in this water pump were completely shot. And honestly, I'm not sure how much time this one had left before it failed and the car overheated. And our next step is to remove four more 10 millimeter bolts located here on the water pump. Now 
Okay, now that those four nuts are removed, we can pull the water pump straight back. And just as a warning, more coolant is probably going to pour out of the motor once the seal is broken. Now we'll just take a clean cloth and clean our gasket surface here and prepare it for the new water pump. Our next step is to remove the thermostat housing and the thermostat is actually one piece with an electronic sensor in this generation of BMWs. So again we'll take our flathead screwdriver, loosen up the clip on our lower radiator hose We'll unclip the connector by pushing in the pin and lifting up. Now we have three 10 millimeter bolts, two underneath, one up here, and I believe a 13 millimeter. And lastly, we have our 13 millimeter up top. Now we should be able to just pull back on the thermostat housing just as a little tip for you guys it's always interesting to see when the parts were changed last in your car and if you look on most of the parts you'll see here there's a little date code stamped into when the part was manufactured as you can see here, this thermostat says 1-3, which means it's from 2013. So we can assume that this thermostat was probably last replaced in 2013 or maybe early 2014. If we take a look at our water pump, however, you can see the date code here says 05, which is probably the original water pump, which is incredible because right now it's 2015 this is a 2005 model X5 and this car has gone 124,000 miles with the original water pump. Again, we'll just take a clean cloth and wipe down the mating surface here on the thermostat housing. So we have our new Hepu German water pump and I will put a link in the description below with the part number and where the cheapest place is to get this. Also we have our Waller German thermostat and I will also put a link down below in the description. Okay so now we'll install our new thermostat. We'll put our first bolt in the top and thread that in not all the way but just the first few couple threads and then we'll put in our other bolts. And of course our big 13 millimeter bolt goes in the top here. Okay, now that we've tightened up all of our bolts, we'll go around one more time and make sure they are snug. And now we can reconnect our plug for the thermostat sensor. So while we're in here, it's a good idea to check out the condition of your belts. This one in the back here is our serpentine belt, or the main drive belt. And this smaller one here is for the air conditioning. Right here is the AC compressor. And since everything is apart, we're going to go ahead and just replace these two belts with some new belts. Okay guys, so we're going to change these serpentine belts out. And in order to get the main belt off, first we have to remove the AC belt. And to do that, we have to release the tension from the tensioner right here. And as you can see, there's a plastic dust cap over our tensioner. So we're going to take a small flathead screwdriver, pop off the dust cover, so we can release tension on the tensioner. Okay, so we're going to take a T50 Torx bit we're going down clockwise until we can slip the AC belt off. 
Okay, so we'll pull off this old main belt as well. Now we can place the new belt in. We can reinstall our AC belt. Now we can install the new water pump by sliding it into place over the studs. And we'll reinstall the four 10 millimeter nuts. And don't forget to snap our dust shield for the AC tensioner back into place. Now we can reconnect our lower radiator hose to the thermostat and secure it with the release clip, pushing it back into place. We can also reinstall our water pump pulley. Just note that the distance between these two holes is longer than the distance between these ones. So we need to align this pulley with the water pump accordingly. And remember, we can't really tighten these four bolts until we have the serpentine belt on, which puts tension on this to stop it from moving. So let's take our breaker bar and our eight millimeter Allen socket. And now we can reinstall the serpentine belt. Once we've slipped the belts into place, we can remove tension from the tensioner. And now we can come back and do a final torque on our water pump pulley bolts. Now this next step isn't necessary, however I always like to put a little bit of anti-seize on the water pump threads. This helps the fan clutch thread on easily and it also helps us in removal in the future. Now that everything is back together, we're going to reinstall the fan shroud with the fan clutch and the fan. We can reinstall our plug. Now we can reinstall our fan clutch. And remember, this is a bit counterintuitive, but we're actually gonna go left to tighten it because the threads are reversed. Once we have the initial threads on there, we can just spin it. until it stops. There we go. And we'll take our 32 millimeter wrench and make sure it's snug. And let's reconnect our upper radiator hose. And we'll reinstall this trim panel. And our final step here is to refill the reservoir with BMW coolant. Well guys, as you can see, the water pump issue has been solved. There's no more bearing noise or knocking coming from that water pump. I hope this video helped you guys out today. Let me know in the comments below what you're working on this weekend. And I'll see you guys soon.